Just about to the half hour here on Newsy. Today marks the beginning of a crucial week in the House's impeachment inquiry. And it started with a deposition from President Trump's former national security specialist on Russia. Her appearance comes as a result of a subpoena, a tool Democrats have been heavily relying on throughout this whole thing. So today I spoke with Casey Burgett, a fellow at a nonpartisan think tank in D.C., on why that matters. Casey, everyone's watching The Hill this week, and I'm wondering what expectations you would have when you're watching, because, you know, we don't know exactly what's going to be written testimony or even spoken at this point. When you see someone like Fiona Hill go up, what are you watching for? I'm watching what everyone else is watching, basically the, the readouts from each of the parties saying what she said behind closed doors. Uh, we've had a few trial balloon messages uh, uh, leaked out by each of these witnesses saying, giving a, a, a baseline of what we expect them to say, but uh, that can come off uh, differently when you get pers a person in the room, they start facing questions from, um, from pretty political people within the room. So I'm interested to see how each party portrays it. Um, and they're going to be diametrically opposed. Mm -hmm. The Republicans are going to say one thing. Democrats are going to say the other. It's just a matter of uh, uh, who you believe most and, and what evidence they bring to bear based on secondhand accounts of what that person said. You worked at Congressional Research Service. And so you know the workings of the Hill probably better than anybody, including a lot of staffers who are there. So I'm wondering, you know, usually we see requests to come and speak to Congress mm -hmm. sent out. And if that's not complied with, then we see a subpoena sent out. We've seen a whole lot of subpoenas right. going out. What does that tell you? It's a huge sense of urgency, and it's a, it's another signal that the, the oversight process in this particular instance has broken down. A lot of oversight requests are just routine matters. There's, there's nothing political about them. They make document requests and give them deadlines, and they're usually missed, it for, in all honesty. Uh, agencies miss them because there's just so much going on at any given time. Um, but this one is obviously political, and it's on front page from here to Timbuktu. Um, so the, it is a signal from the majority that they, don't, they are taking President Trump's uh, blank blanket non-cooperation as, uh, well, we have powers too. And as members of Congress, as Congress as an institution, as a co-equal uh, branch in our system of government, uh, we're going to, to put the legal weight behind this by issuing subpoenas and contempt. Are they building an obstruction article of impeachment right now to show again and again they didn't show up? Uh, if they're not, they should be, and I'm, I guarantee that they are. Um, it's probably going to be uh, as, as narrow as they're focusing on this Ukraine matter in that when there's a lot of other things to go and investigate. Uh, I think uh, impeachment as just a uh, breaking down of our institutional norms and obstruction of justice is going to be, if not number one, the number two on their articles of impeachment list because it's, it's, it's a foundational piece of what, we, what our co-equal branches are set up. Casey, at this point, Joe Biden and his son Hunter, uh, putting aside legalities, right. how much trouble are they in, do you think, electorally? Well, I know one thing, Joe Biden doesn't want to talk about this. Right. He's just, he's, his name is brought up with uh, corruption, and that's never good. He's trying to make the case that separates him from other Democratic uh, candidates in the field, and so he wants to talk about issues. And right now, he's having to defend himself, whether he's done anything wrong at all. Uh, he's not talking about what he believes and what separates him from the Elizabeth Warrens and the Kamala Harris's. Do you think at any point the Kamala Harris's and Elizabeth Warrens and other contenders could start to pile on a bit? I don't know, and that's, that remains to be seen, but right now, they're all focused on Trump. So as as long as that's true, I'm sure that that's going to suck up all the oxygen in the room as it does in Congress and everywhere else. Uh, but at some point, if they need it as a differentiator, I wouldn't imagine that just the questions will, will be tough for Joe Biden to, to deal with every day. Casey Burgett, thank you. Thank you. Let's keep with 2020. Should social media sites allow campaign ads that contain lies? 2020 candidate Elizabeth Warren is protesting Facebook's approval of false political ads by running her own false ad 